Hello again. We are now on our week three of the third quarter lesson and video tutorials for the week. With this, let us proceed with the agenda for today. First agenda is that at the end of the lesson, you'll be able to describe a proportion, illustrate similarity of figures, and prove similarity theorem. Let's proceed with our first topic for today and this is all about the ratio and proportions. What is a ratio? A ratio is the comparison between two quantities. With that, if you are given two quantities and the two quantities is A and B, the ratio of A to B can be expressed in the following ways. It can be written as this, wherein it can be read as A is to B. Or, as you all know, ratio means fraction, so it can be written as a fraction as well. If the quantities are A and B, then it can be written as A over B. So these are the two ways on how you can express a ratio. Okay, let us now express the following as a ratio. We have here 1 meter to 20 centimeters. We cannot express this as a ratio yet because this given or the given do not have the same unit of measure. So one must be converted first to an, to this to another unit before it can be changed as a ratio. What do I mean by that? So in order to convert this to a ratio, we must change one meter to centimeters. Okay? And there are one in one meter there are around one hundred centimeters. So with this, this given now can be changed to 100 centimeters to 20 centimeters. And now we can freely change this to a ratio and then this will be 100 over 20 which is equal to reduce to lowest term. The ratio is 5 is to 1 or 5 over 1. Next, we have 5 days to 2 weeks. It is easier to convert the larger unit to a smaller unit. So in this case, we will convert two weeks to days. Okay? So how many days are there in two weeks? There are 14 days, right? So with that, five days now is to 14 days. Since they are now of equal unit of measure, we can now express this as a ratio. It can be written as 5 over 14 or 5 is to 14. Okay? Another example, we have here a century to a decade, which is a bigger unit. As you all know, the bigger unit is a century. So in a century, there are how many decades in a century? There are 10 decades. Okay? So with this, we can now have 10 decades to a decade can be translated now as a ratio as 10 is to 1 or 10 over 1 or 10 is to 1. Okay? That is how you can express a given statement into a ratio. Now, what is a proportion? A proportion is the equality of two ratios. So, since it is the equalities of two ratios, it can be written or an, a proportion can be, look, can be seen or look like this. A is to B equals C is to D. You have here ratio equals ratio. Therefore, equality of two ratios. And it can be written, all, written also as A over B equals C over D. Okay? Wherein A and D are what we call your extremes and B and C are the means. To further understand this, let us now identify the following given if they are proportional or not. 1 half, 1 is to 2 equals 3 is to 6. Is this 
given a proportion. We can only say that a ratio is proportional if the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. So let's have this. It says there that a ratio, that a proportion or that the given is proportional if the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. So 2 times 3, 6. 1 times 6 is also 6. The, the product of the means and extremes here are equal. Therefore, this is proportional or this is a proportion. Okay? Another example, we have here 5 is to 3B equals 20A equal is to 12B. Let's get the product of the means first. 3B times 20 a is 60AB. 5A times 12B is also 60AB. So we can say that this one is proportional or this is a proportion. Mom, how about if the ratio were written in a fraction form? Okay, let's do that. 5A over 3B equals 20A over 12B. All you have to do is to cross multiply. If their products are equal, then it is a proportion. Okay? Next. We have here 2X over 3Y equals 2Y over 3X. So, let's do cross multiplication. 3Y times 2y is 6y squared and 2x times 3x is 6x squared. Their product are not equal, therefore this is not a proportion. Okay? I hope this, uh, in order to determine a proportion, you, all you have to do is just get the product or of the means and extremes or just simply multiply or cross multiply them next let us know how to find the missing term in each of the following proportions so example number one we have this in order for you to find the value of x all you have to do is just cross multiply okay so 2 times 3x plus 3 equals 10 times 3 is 30. Simplify the left side and you will have 6x plus 6 equals 30. Then, 6x is equals to 30 minus 6. 6x equals 24. Divide both sides by 6. x is equal to 4. Now that you were able to find the value of x, you can now check if this part here will gi really give you a fraction that is equals to 2 third. Because as you all know, when we say proportion, it is the equalities of two ratios. So this 2 third must be equal to this to the right side. So let's substitute 10 over 3, replace x with 4 plus 3. This is just checking. Uh, we are just checking whether 4 is really the correct answer. Then 10 over 12 plus 3. Then you will have 10 over 15. Then if you will replace 2 third equals 10 over 15 now, get their cross multiplication, you will have 30 and 10 times 3 is 30. The, the, their cross multiplication product or the product of their means and extremes are equal. Therefore, 4 is the really the correct answer. Okay, another example. We have here 3 fourth equals 9 over x. To solve this, again, just do cross multiplication. So you will have 3x equals 36. Divide both sides by 3 and x is equal to 12. And if you will replace this by 12, 3 times 12 is 36, and 9 times 4 
is also 36. The, the product of the x means and extremes are equal. Therefore, this is a proportion and 12 as the value of x will make the equation true. Okay? Next, let us now determine the different properties of proportion. Actually, you have the idea of the first one because the first one is called the cross-multiplication property. Our first given is A over B equals C over D. If you were going to use the cross-multiplication property, just multiply this and B times C and you will get AD equals BC. Now, can we interchange the two? Can BC becomes first before AD? Yes, it can be BC equals AD. There's nothing, uh, there's no problem with that. And another example, we have here 1 half equals 4 8. Apply plus multiplication property. This one here, we'll have 8. And this one is also 8. That is uh, the first property of proportion. Second property of proportion is what we call the alternation property. And again, if we have A over B equals C over D, using alternation property, you will just use this. The root word of alternation is alternate, meaning you will interchange the position of C and B and you're using the alternation property, it will now look like this. AC over BD. A, A over C equals B over D. Apply the alternation property with this example and you will now have 1 fourth equals 2 over A. Changing the position or alternating the position of 2 and 4. And you want to know whether your answer is still the same? Yes, if you will check by cross multiplication, their outcome or their result is still the same. Next, third property of proportion is what we call the inverse property. Inverse means reverse. So if we have A over B equals C over D, applying the inverse property with this proportion, you will now have B over A equals C, oh, equals D over C rather. Applying it with 1 half equals 4 8, then the equation will look as it will look as 2 over 1 equals 8 over 4. Applying cross multiplication property with the new result, you will still come up with the same answer. Next, fourth property of proportion is what we call the addition property. So, if we have A over B equals C over D, it is now A plus B over B equals to C plus D over D. So, how does addition property will work on 1 half equals 4 over 8? It will be now 1 plus 2 over 2 equals 4 plus 8 over 8. Okay? Okay? This is all about the addition property. And I know what that you have the idea of the fifth property and this is the subtraction property. This is almost similar with the addition property. The only thing that changes is the operation. So we'll work on A over B equals C over D again. And you will have A minus B over B equals C minus D all over D. With this, we can now apply it to 1 half equals 4 over 8. So you will have 1 minus 2 over 2 equals 4 minus 8 over 8. So this property only states that whenever the whatever the arrangement of your proportion is, they will still come up with the same answer. Okay, we will elaborate on proportion on the later part of our lesson. I hope this the definition and the structure of a proportion is clear to you now and I hope you'll be able to apply it to this lesson that we will have for the day. I hope to see you on the next one for our next video is all about proportional segments. See you!